I've welded together my collector. Now I'm ready to take the next step in fabricating this turbo manifold together. I've got some weldels, I've got some straight pipe, I've got a head flange. Let's get started. The first step in starting my turbo manifold is I'm gonna take my collector and I'm gonna bolt it to my turbo. I'm gonna take that as an assembly and I'm gonna hold it inside the engine bay where I think it's gonna live. And I wanna take a couple of weld L's and my head flange and I'm gonna put my head flange on the engine and I'm gonna kinda of hold these in place. I might need another set of hands with a friend and I'm gonna position a, maybe one, one elbow on the bottom of the collector or on the head flange and kind of give myself a visualization as to how that first runner is going to travel from my head flange to my collector. Once I have that generally where I think it's going to go and this is in the position where I want the turbo to be, I'm going to tack that runner together. Once that runner is tacked together, then I can put it back in the car and test fit it to make sure that I'm not going to run any kind of clearance issues with my turbo. So when I begin mocking up the first runner, uh, the, the runner I choose to do is basically just the one that I have the easiest access to. It doesn't really matter which runner you start with, but generally you want to have something that you can get, get your hands to easily inside the engine bay. You don't want to be reaching at the back over trying to hold pieces together inside an engine bay with a turbo in your hand with a collector bolted to it at the same time. It's a lot of weight. So I'll try and do that as simple as I can. And then I've got, uh, once I've got that first runner completed, then I know where my turbo is going to sit. I can bolt it all back inside the car, put my turbo on there and then visualize where everything else is going to be routed. And then I'll begin uh, routing the rest of the runners and I'll do one at a time. And that I can actually do outside the car. I don't need to do it uh, inside the car. I can visualize it and I may test fit it inside the car if there's areas where I'm concerned about clearance and issues like that. But certainly I, I don't need to tack, to get, tack the whole thing together inside the car. Starting with our first runner, we need to make our round pipe into an oval to match the shape of the port on the head flange. I'm going to squeeze it in a vise and then shape it until it matches as close as I can get it to the shape of the port. Then I will shape it with a hammer and swaging ball. Once I'm happy with how well it matches, then I proceed to tack weld the rest of the runner together. So I'm just going to put two tack welds to start. And then I'm going to check and make sure that the inside of my alignment between the runner and the head flange matches up the way I want it to. And then I'm going to continue on with the next piece. Now you might, if you have a nice clean cut on your uh, pipes and you've squared them off nice and even, you can get away with doing one small tack weld without any filler. As long as you have no gap and there's good contact between the both sides of the material. And then add filler on the other tack if you need to. If you don't, then you can skip it. Well, when you're mocking this up inside the engine bay, you can take a Sharpie and draw a line across two pieces of pipe to uh, use as a reference for when you're tack welding it together, just to line up those two marks.
So now I'm ready to bolt this up to my turbo and then put it back in the engine bay and see how things fit. And then I'll continue on with the next runner. Once everything is bolted back into the engine bay and I'm happy with all the clearances around my turbo, I will remove the turbo and then try and visualize the flow path for each individual runner from the head flange to the collector, keeping in mind all the clearances and accessory components I need to add at the end of the manifold build. Next, I will pull the manifold back out of the engine bay and begin to mock up each runner on the bench. I may tack weld a little bit from each runner to make sure that I'm going to have clearance where they all join into the collector and they're not going to be hitting each other or too tight. Ideally you want the runner lengths to be close to the same, but having runners that are all the same length does not necessarily mean they all flow the same. What you want to focus on is making sure that they're all merging together just before the turbo in a nice gradual angle. Once the manifold is completely tacked together, I'll begin welding it. Now I will weld the manifold with it bolted to my heat sink plates. Um, so when I weld this, it's all tacked together now. When I weld this, I am not gonna weld my collector joint welds. I'm gonna leave those. And I'm not gonna weld my head flange joints either. I'm gonna leave those. Because I need to, I need to break this manifold apart to a degree so I can finish off the welds that I can't reach right now. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna weld here I can reach, here I can reach, all around this one I can reach, all over here I can reach. And then once I've got all the welding done except for the collector and the head flange, I'm gonna break this number three runner off because it comes up and it covers up part of my number four runner and a little bit of my number two over here. But I may break off the number two runner as well so that I can get in between here to finish off uh, the inside of number one where it's between one and two. Uh, and then after that's all welded, I'm gonna put those two runners back on. I will weld the head flange and the collector, add my wastegate, and then it'll be ready for installation. It, you might not think it's necessary to clamp it, pull this down when I'm not welding the head flange, but you know what, this is gonna it's gonna pull and move this head flange, these runners connected to the head flange, whether it's connected to something or not, right? It's gonna to wanna to pull and distort, right? Because that's what happens when you weld. So what I'll do is keep that bolted down as long as possible. You may notice that I'm holding my torch over my weld puddle after I've finished the weld. The reason for this is to ensure that there's enough argon purging the oxygen around the molten material while it cools down. I'm going to also, after I take this uh, collector off, I'll probably spend a little bit of time polishing the inside of it just to make it a little smoother flowing right at that collector. To mock up my wastegate placement, I will install the manifold back into the engine bay. I will take my wastegate and hold it in the general vicinity where I want it to sit. I need to keep in mind that I'm going to have a dump tube exiting my wastegate as well that you may or may not want to recirculate back into your exhaust stream. After deciding where my wastegate is going to go, I begin fabricating the wastegate branch that will be welded to my collector. An important design aspect of adding a wastegate is to promote flow into it. This will help prevent boost creep. I'm gonna add the wastegate on my right directly on my collector if I can. I like to keep the wastegate branch as short as possible. That way I'm gonna prevent any kind of heat related uh, premature fatigue issues. I've seen lots of wastegate branches where they've got the wastegate sitting off in space with this branch going to it and you end up getting a lot of heat right in this collector here because that's where all your exhaust is merging into one spot just before it goes into the turbine wheel or your turbo. 
and when you get that high degree of temperature there it causes it to overheat sometimes and if you have a large a long branch coming off it with a heavy wastegate hanging off it that arm's going to vibrate and you're going to have cracking issues right at that collector so to prevent that if you can all if you can always try and put the wastegate flange directly on the collector Once my manifold is completed, I install it back in the engine bay, bolt up my turbo, and then begin planning for my downpipe, intake, and charge piping. So this runner here, this is the runner I started with, and then my collector's over here at the back underneath, right? So that's the, this is the one I have the, the easiest access to, right? You, Cause you imagine none of the rest of this stuff is in there, right? Eh? But it was also, you know, it's also one of the shorter runners. You, you may not want to, um, you don't want to do a really long runner. Start with a really long runner because when you make adjustments, if you have to tweak it a little bit after you tack it up the first time, uh, it makes it a little more difficult just because the adjustments you make are magnified by the fact that it's a really long runner. Mm -hmm.